Hello everyone. It would it would appear that I am invisible. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Welcome back to another stream on the twitch.tv slash the Asuma playing on the Hermitcraft creative server. Today's going to be a bit of a, a hybrid stream. We're going to both do some redstoning and do some uh, some survival Minecraft on Hermitcraft. That's kind of the plan. This region's been lifted from Hermitcraft and pasted over here, by the way, if you're wondering why this is like identical. I don't know why there's this block here just floating. Like, it seems kind of odd. I'm going to remove it. Anyway, the plan today is just to figure out some uh, contraptions and get on the server and uh, do some building, play on there, etc. Becker11, thank you so much for the bananas in chat. Same to Lucaro, Mayskull, and Spokey Doki, and Brain Boy, and Winnie T. Ford. Appreciate you putting those in the chat to let me know that I'm live. I've got a hot cup of tea here, by the way. Can't forget about that. Uh, so we're going to build an amazing little contraption just here at the beginning. And this amazing little contraption is uh, what it's going to do is repair your pick when you come back to this area. That is at least the plan. Short Insomniac is here for seven months. How are you, X? I am good. Thanks for asking. Also, Paul Default. Paul Defoe even signed up via Patreon to join our Let's Play Minecraft Together community. Thank you for signing up, Paul. Appreciate you. Yes, uh, today's just been a little non-stop for me. This thing, that thing, that thing, this thing. I've been working on a big video for a couple of months now, and I finished it today. And I've got a lot of things going on tomorrow, so like, it's like live stream, then this thing, that thing, this thing, that thing, which I like. But you always got to follow it up with a moment of rest at some point, I feel like. So uh, I'm thinking on the weekend I might watch a movie. There's no like family time scheduled or anything, so I might just take an evening off and chillax or something. Who, who knows? We'll see. So anyway, what we're we doing right now? So with this contraption, uh, we want the player to be able to stand here, holding down the pick forever, right? Now I need to make some sort of a system that detects when this flying machine returns, but not when it leaves, strange enough. And I can do that with a simple flip-flop. Yeah, I think I think I kind of know what to do. Let's actually clear out a little bit more space with the world edit. I'm just thinking through some steps because it's not just the one thing I'm trying to do here. Have a bit more space. You know, we, we can press the button and then the machine starts. Terrific. Now, when we get back, we want it to go again so I can stay AFK on it, right? So when we get back, we need to detect the machine getting back. We also need to give me, the player, a chance to, like, turn around and turn this thing off. So directly behind me on this side, we'll have a lever. This is going to be, like, the on-off lever. Or it could be a button, we'll, we'll see. It might end up being, uh, I'm going to put it on top just in case it somehow messes with the flying machine going past. Oops, my apologies. Thank you ever so much for four months of support. Appreciate you. Thank you for those subscriptions. Oh boy, the naughty ice farm. Good luck. You can say it's naughty, but it's been working now, which is terrific. I also added a huge delay so I can sort out uh, this old thing. We probably want to keep the delay. But whatever happens over here, it's then going to probably send a signal back to the same place. So, much of what we've got going on here is going to end up, like, pretty ropey, unless I... Hmm. Could replace this with a comparator decay clock. It's all tricky stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking it probably makes more sense for the redstone to, like from, from the input, it probably makes sense for the wire to work both ways, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. So if I get, if I get rid of that and put the wire like this, and it should have no, yeah, no problem going up there and giving that an update. So whenever we power, huh, whenever we power that, right, we start the whole sequence again. So 
We can get a signal from over here going across that way. A bit concerned about how close these updates might be to that. Right, so we'll go we'll go underneath, we'll avoid that entirely. And then one day I might have to make this all look presentable, right? There's no there's no proper way for the player to get over here as of yet. I'm gonna guess the best you can do is like have a hop. Have a hop, buddy. Or maybe maybe you just walk in from over here, right? That's probably the better way. You, you just you come in to this area over here, plop you plop yourself down, get yourself ready, press the button, all that kind of stuff, right? X is your hearing back to normal after you were sick a while back, says Trip Squeak. Yeah, haven't thought about that in a long time. The hearing's you know probably damaged on some level permanently, but otherwise you know it's back to normal. It feels like. Lays 24 MC, thank you for eight months of support. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing here on the Twitch. You should look at an Efo Hopper Clock instead of repeater spam. I, I have to explain this so many times, but like the Efo Hopper Clock is great, but it's not ideal for every situation. The reason it's not really ideal here is because uh, it has like a... Well, actually, in this case, you could get away with it. But the thing with the Efo Hopper Clock is that it has to recharge. And some circuits, you don't want to do that. Um, but anyway, the, the repeater spam was just me being lazy. And we won't worry about that for now. So, yeah, all's, all's good up there. So I'm just trying to think it through again. Player goes down, player comes back. We need to detect this thing coming back. I really don't want to accidentally set it off and do all of this redstone without that. Like, this thing is bub powered, so it would be wise for me to have a means to test it without activating that. So like we can get a redstone signal when it comes and when it goes. And in order for us to convert that into the signal we want, this is going to have to be a flip-flop. Um, so let's say it starts here and then goes back. Now because that creates a constant power source, I don't think that's what I actually want. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we'll have that there. So that'll create a redstone signal here. Alright, so if I go... Yeah, like that. So we create a pulse. That pulse then has to set off a timer. And I know exactly what to use here. But all of the redstones, I've kind of realized it's all in the wrong place. So let's go grab a dispenser. This is the, this is the magic trick we're doing here. And I've really got to think about where I put this. Because the ideal spot is sort of directly above the player, where we have this. So let's say I put a fence gate somewhere around here. I think, hmm, I've got to look at many different things that can get in the way here. Like there's flying machines nearby. So let's say we've got a dispenser facing downwards there. We can probably put storage and stuff here. Swift! Kind of feel like... Probably... Hmm. Probably going to get things like... I'll tell you what, let's use a trapdoor. Because it can be waterlogged. And then we need to do the same thing again where that slab is, which concerns me because there's not a block below it. That being said, uh, yeah, no, no, that's that's important. The water would flow out. So now... Right. That's what we want. So we keep our water sources in the corner. And with that, if we power this thing correctly, it won't mess with anything else. So we're probably going to be powering this block. Mm-hmm. Now that's directly above the player. And that means that all of the XP we're going to dispense should land on the player. Let's go ahead and get some uh, some of those bottles together. Mike's XRS, thank you ever so much for using the Amazon Prime. Appreciate you supporting the channel over here. The fishy says, totally didn't join the stream and not understand what X is doing, Lameo. We're creating a repair station for the uh, for the farm here. So we're going to dispense XP down on the player. So we're going to have like hoppers and stuff up here, but we'll use this block, which is, you know, it's close to the flying machine, but I don't see it being an issue. So we need to get like a, a 
pulsing redstone signal up here. This is this is feels like it's getting easier as we go along. I also think the better place to Hmm, maybe we could hmm. Right, so this thing pops up and down when it's activated. I you know, I really don't want to like test this because <laughs> you just want it to work first time. As this thing is like, you have to wait for it to go all the way down, all the way back again. So what I'll probably do is design it and test it after we've made a schematic. Also, we have the one, the only, the school, the 89 months, the Evil X, all the things. Thank you so much, school. Dang, eight, I thought you were at 90 already, to be honest. I thought you'd already hit the 90 club. Dang, closing in, closing in. So like, September 23, that's the date, isn't it? I got I got 11 months to figure something out. <laughs> cool. Right, so for in order for me to not colossally mess up, we're going to assume we get our signal from there. It's going to be a one tick, right? It shouldn't mess with anything else around here. So the immediate thing for us to do to extend that and then this is probably a little too close uh hmm yeah it is it is too close right so we extend that that's going to go into a comparator decay clock right not an efo hopper clock you could use one because it'd have so much time to recharge but uh raw needs i think we'll double up on that Is that correct? I feel like that's correct. It's decaying, right? Yeah, it's decaying. Okay then, so here... Yeah, let's... Mm, not quite ideal, is it? Like, the space is just off a little bit. Which, I guess, means just move it, you know? So we've got that there, and then we have our sticky piston at this level. The only thing is, it's not really actually... Uh, I can't remember if that will decay or not. That looks to me like it's not decaying. Yeah, so you might need to do that, essentially. And then it don't work, so... No. No to that idea. Well, I guess we'll have to raise it up by one. Right, we've got more noises coming through. We've got... Meruza Merua with the Prime. Thank you so much for using the Prime on me. I appreciate it, my dude. Thank you for your support. We got Jenks1702 also with the Prime. Ferris Live here subscribing. Haley Bailey, 21 months. X, hope you're well. I'm enjoying the direction this season is taking. Me too, me too. It's starting to feel a little bit more like a, a classic old school season, you know. Back, back to the old ways of the, of the Hermitcraft thing. I'm liking it. Okay, so, I'm going to drink some tea, but moment of truth first of all. Now that has got to do some good repairing, and then off goes the player again. So, after that we need to send a signal down to reset the whole thing. Coolio! Billman, 68, thank you so much for your continued support, my dude. And Becca, thanks for gifting a sub to Soundwave Hope. Soundwave, be sure to say thanks in the chat, you probably already said it. Appreciate you. Right, time to drink some tea. Mmm. <sighs> Tip Squeak is asking, how does quasi connectivity make sense? Well, it doesn't, right? But like, it's just a quirk of this this game. Mmm. <sighs> mmm. 
does X have villagers to provide XP? I don't remember. I do not, but uh, ZF's going to hook me up. So my plan is to get this thing on Hermit Craft so that it works. And then I'll be like, ZF, come and watch. And then ZF will be like, I'm watching this ice machine. It's slowly traveling off into distance. I'll be like, ZF, watch. It's going to slowly travel back over here. And then bam. Spencers, right? So, you know, if I want an extraordinary supply, hop a chest, la 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 la. Now, we want to test. We want to test this over here. Which I think we can do if we're if we're clever. Let's just break a few pieces of redstone. So we want to send a signal back in. I'm kind of thinking like it might work the same sort of timing as here. Um Hmm. We could probably have a long pulse go into this thing with no issues. So therefore... Right, and we also need that off switch as well. So this whole thing will be sequenced by this block here. <laughs> this is this is just turning into like a, an ugly tangle of blocks, but I kind of don't care. It's like, we need redstone going across there. That's how we turn the thing off, right? So now it's on. Drag it across and we'll turn it off. And then it won't repair when we come round. Um, so what's, like, the most elegant way to send a signal downwards? Hmm. Probably, probably using... Probably using slime blocks, right? So we want a redstone block somewhere down here. Uh, I'm not going to press it yet, like that. Slime blocks. Yeah, you can you can see that's just pretty straightforward then, right? So in order for us to yeah, we're gonna we're gonna activate this manually. So this thing's going to get powered and power that. We've disconnected it from the flying machine and from the end over here. So let's give this a quick power, quick whirl. Right, and we're listening to those XP orbs. The timing's basically perfect. That's all that we need right there. That's how we conduct the test. How many, uh, how many did we just tear through, right? If I get rid of this, we've done two dispensers. So it, it seems to dispense, let's say, uh, let's say there were four left. You could look at it like it took 60. So 20, I think it t dispenses 29 XP bottles, right? Here's where we do some math on stream. Totally not using a calculator. By the way, Grumpy Hydra, thank you ever so much for subscribing. Your support is appreciated. So what did we say? 29, and I think the average of an XP bottle is around 6 or 7. So let's multiply that by 6.5. That's 188.5 uses that we can repair. Now, if that's not enough, we could double up the amount of these dispensers, potentially. I could have another one that faces in the side just over here. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Redstone is mind-boggling. Comparators make no sense to me, says Kalano. Well, well, that's an opportunity to learn, right? Rather than tell yourself it's mind-boggling, because it's not. I mean, we can have fun and say it's mind-boggling, but you're totally capable of understanding how a comparator works. Uh, comparators work with signal strength. I'm just going to do this. It has simple add and subtract features, right? So the further the redstone is away from the source of power, the weaker it looks, the lower signal strength it has until it runs out. The comparator, unlike a repeater, as you'll see here, a repeater will simply oh, bring it back to full strength. A comparator does not do that. Uh-huh. The comparator will just pass on the same signal strength as what was behind it. That can be really useful because it's got add and subtract mode. So, uh put something like this alongside it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to interact with that in a negative way, but anyway. You've got a container full of items. This gives out a signal strength. Right, and you can see that it's uh, subtracted it from the original now. That one's turned off. If I get rid of that, it turns back on. 
So it gives you it gives you um, extra functionality out of out of signal strength, essentially. It's a really great feature. It's one of those like Mojang have always strived to not do things that mods do, and like Comparator was a move where it's like I don't think anyone did that with mods. There were loads of mods like Bluestone or whatever sticky repeaters that you could put up a wall, a vertical redstone, but no one had uh, no one had done Comparators. Uh, JN Minecraft says, I found Comparator is one of the hardest components to understand at first, but once you get it, they're one of the easiest. Yeah, pretty much. Kalano says, kind of helps, I guess. I'm still confused, though. Well, the best thing to do is to get in a world and play around with it and experiment and learn and try things and you'll uh, hopefully, uh, you know, create an understanding of it. Right, so uh, the, other, the other thing I just wanted to do quickly was, like... Let's try and do this with commands. Give Suma Netherite. I want to go back a little bit. Netherite pick. Pickaxe. Yeah, I'm not going to. I probably not. Oh, count is next. One. Where does this go? Maybe it, I forget. They change it on occasion. It goes there now. Yep. Did that work? Yeah, alright, so you got 203 uses. Uh, let's measure our farm where all the ice is. So, how many harvestable pieces of ice are there maximum? Hey, we're being raided by the one, the only, the legend himself, Mr. Pixel Riffs. Hey, my dude, how you doing? Hope all is good in your world. And thank you for the raid. Welcome, all the Pixel Raiders. You are joining us as we have finished doing some redstone contraptionage. We're just doing a little bit of math. Now, 725, and then we return again. Let's say we round it up to like a 1,000. Can you use this a 1,000 times and then repair it with 188 XP? My hunch is that it might not fully repair it, but you'll be good enough to go back up and down here a whole bunch of times, and I'll keep an eye on it when I do it. So I'm kind of happy with that, but I definitely want to revisit the math on that at some point and make it perfect. I think that's a really cool little contraption. This is something I want to do with my Hermitcraft series now, is like every time you think you complete a project someone in your comments or some idea pops into your head and you realise you can go a little further. So I want to keep like coming back and just chipping away at small ideas. So like, we'll come back and build this, and then we'll come back and do the math for the AFK and stuff and then we'll maybe put some support struts on this thing. You know, just chip away at these projects and have fun with them one step at a time. Big Saurus, thank you for the 51 months my dude! Hope you all well, fella. I'm all good. All's good in my world. My dude, I've been on a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a, a groove, a streak lately. Just feeling like uh, all's, all smooth, apart from the bumps. <laughs> right, so, this is now ready to be built on Hermitcraft. But for those of you that have just tuned in, I'll explain what I've done. We've got a flying machine, and I've built some redstone around it without actually testing it, because I'm very scared of sending it all the way down there and back again which will take a long time uh, what I should do now because this is ready is just put those bits of redstone back so here at the ice farm you press the button and you get sent all the way down here on a slow flying machine that allows you to harvest every single block that gets pushed down by the flying machine above the idea is when it comes back new ice would have generated so as you go back and forth through the farm you can continuously use it, but your pick is going to eventually get damaged and break. So we want a XP repair station. So when we get the flying machine back here, I, I've just realized I've missed a step. I'm glad we've decided to come over this again. Mm, excuse me, burping. Drinking lots of tea. Who can tell me what I've uh, mistakenly missed out? So the way I need to do this is just kind of looking at the space we have here. Hmm. It's almost perfect, but it's definitely not. Maybe like that. Right, that can still be there, but this whole thing needs to be done differently now. So let's be careful. When we when we leave, oh! I just said let's be careful. I break it. What is wrong with me? Jeez! Right. No, did it again. 
Dang it, I'm not going to be able to do that quick enough, am I? There we go. Right, that created a signal. So its starting position needs to be one block out. Okay, this is a small element I need. Uh, I missed. That's going to set off all of our redstone, which is currently wired up. So let's get rid of that repeater. Okay, thinking for every step here. Okay, there you go. So now it's not going to make a signal when the machine starts. But it will make one when it comes back. So when it comes back, it creates uh, a decay clock. So that means that power goes to resetting the whole flying machine. And then this gets powered. And that's where our XP bottles get dispensed onto the player and repair their pick. So that is now all ready to go. Awesome. I am even going to... Do I want to do any more tidying up of the redstone? I don't think I do. Not right now. Uh, maybe, I think when I come back to this, it would be a good idea to clear out a little bit more of this stone. Just so the parameters of the area we're working in are a little clearer. Get rid of all of that. Yeah, right. So I'll make a schematic here and then we can call that a project done. Now that took me 26 minutes. Dang. Okay, that's great. I was a little bit worried that, uh, you know, time is of the essence, as they say. I want to get things done today. Cool. Right, let's make a schematic. Let's check our noises in the ear. We've got Dago64 here for seven months. Seven months, six of them gifted by the community. Thanks so much. Thank you, community, for the gifted subs. So many of them we've had. Uh, Lerix says, Imagine being so much of a mad lad you spend this much time on an ice farm. Asuma was such a chad. I'm a chad? <laughs> hey, I'm me. I, uh, I don't like all those terms that try and box people into being something. I'm just here doing me. Enjoying what I enjoy. Uh, that's something that we did the other day. So what am I looking at? Uh, new selection, right? Uh, ice farm XP UPG upgrade. Upgrade. <laughs> Sounds like a puppy thing. Okay, so we've got one corner of it over here. We'll go get the other corner over there. It should be made light work of because we can just sort of stand in the room. Use the corners of it. Crazy Nuts 24, thank you for your Prime subscription. Appreciate it, my dude. Hope you're uh, enjoying the stream. And move to player. Cool, do we have the rendering on? I don't think we do. So that is all that I need. Um, I can just make it go one block lower, perhaps. Or maybe two, just in case it's not quite enough. Yeah. That captures all the different elements that we need. So we will go ahead and save that. Save schematic. And then I can use it on Hermitcraft. Now, there were a couple of things we were going to do before we head on to Hermitcraft. Aha, the next one might not be so easy. I also need to do some off-server stuff too. I'm really pleased with that though. Like, that was... Uh, I had a feeling, like, once you get stuck in it, it would probably not be too difficult. But that went really smooth. And in theory should work on the server. This is concerning. <laughs> This world's had a whole bunch of like region files and stuff swapped around, so it's a bit messy here and there. Uh, I need to head to a location, and I'm not sure which one it is. Let me grab my list of locations. I believe it's this one. Let's find out. So I know you've been doing a lot more redstone. How did you first start to learn, says Craig Taze? I learned by trying to do. And not only can you try to do redstone, you can look up tutorials, you can read about it. You have to just engage with the topic. It's the same for anything. Right, so I think this one is the working blast chamber. I want to hook this up to our tree farm, which is on a different server. So I need to... Uh, probably best to use world edit for this one. So pause one. Right, but position two, I just want to build above the water. So we'll take that. So now I got to uh, schematic, save, blast. I'm going to call it X blast. So assume a blast or whatever, right? Oh, I forgot to copy. Right, now I've got to go do some stuff in the control panel. 
I forgot about this. I should have done this earlier before I streamed. But I had so many distractions earlier. You know, so many little things pop up in my head throughout the day that I've got to do. As well as, like, ideas. I've just been note-taking, like, religiously as of late. And it's so helpful. But I didn't note-take that one. I just got distracted. Um, something else came up. So... Yeah, I've got to go here. Right, I'm on the right track. Just grabbing the files. God, it's so exciting, I know. Mumbo learned redstone from X, says I'm not going to leave. I don't think Mum you could say Mumbo learned from me. Um, like, if you learn redstone from other people, it'll probably be more than one anyway. But I know that Mumbo, before... You know, when he started doing videos, he was watching me and Hermitcraft. So he may have... Um, seen me do redstone but like I I don't know I wouldn't say I taught Mumbo because Mumbo's redstone skills far ex exceed anything I could do right far exceeds anything I could do X have you seen Scar's recent tweet have created a campaign to help may I post the links to Stormageddon I, I haven't seen the tweet I'm gonna go look it up but let me tell you this like creating campaigns on behalf of someone else um it's usually, like, just a rule of thumb, probably not a great idea to do that off of your own back. Now, um, I like to assume the best of people, so I'm going to assume that you're trying to do a good thing. It sounds like you're trying to do a good thing. We see a lot of these campaigns that get started and help change people's lives and stuff like that. Um, but it's not always the best way to, to, to go without talking to people in the community. Like, if you outreach... Uh, and other people around Scar or whoever it is are in the know and can communicate and discuss and make a decision. Uh, you might find collectively the best course of action is to do something like that. But to do it on your own whim, uh, probably not a great idea. You know, you don't even know if Scar wants that out there. I have no idea that this is about. I'm going to go check the tweet in a minute. Um, Right, and and now I'm all I'm all distracted. So I'm going into the redstone world now, and I'm going to go in here and there, and into the schematic folder. Uh huh, and drop this schematic in. Excellent. I've just transferred them between the servers. Um, let's see. Tweet from Scar. I see Doc's been tweeting a lot. <laughs> Right, um, it looks like it's not one tweet, it's a couple. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to read this all right now, but it's something to do with him wanting a wheelchair and, and medical. I'll, I'll, I'll read that after, but look, it's if you're just like a random viewer in the audience, like it's probably not your place to step in and do stuff like that. And if you really want to and you're motivated and you're driven, reach out to people in the community that closer to Scar because uh, who knows if that's what Scar wants people to do right so um, yeah uh, based on a couple of other comments I'm not sure I actually read the right tweets but anyway right now we're moving to the other server where I just put the uh, schematic in right I just moved them from one to the other okay so you can see this is where I did my uh, frog lamp stuff which was a lot of fun. Scar's mods will be able to help way more as they have already have something planned, says Beckett. There you go. Like the um, people around him that are close to him are already doing this thing. And uh, just let this, you know, let this be like some good advice for uh, anyone out there, really. Like, if you see something out there and you want to help make a difference, you need to think about like what's the right way to go about that and reach out to other people and communicate and whatnot to navigate doing that as opposed to just jumping in and creating a campaign uh, I know that kind of thing has happened before for you know not just Scar for various people and it's sometimes not the desired output that they want what's uh what's the is it this one over here that's the working one it feels like yeah it feels like there's a few too many of these things just lying around probably running uh, this this looks like the working one. I'm just wondering what, what's the difference between that and this. These ones also have command blocks in that grow trees every time. 
for testing purposes. Yeah, this looks like it, and then you got the block count. I made a, a brilliant decision of using wood to count how much wood, and like, I got so many comments about it, and I was like, should have just used a different item to count. That's what I should have done. So somewhere around here, we're going to add the blast chamber, but before we do, I kind of feel like we need to uh, just stack this into a new area, essentially. Um, yeah, sometimes the redstone, like, gets going when you move it, and that can cause problems. But so far, so good, I think. Yeah, here's a problem right here, right? We've got a grown tree, and it's... Oh, yeah! Uh, another little addition. If you put that there, it fixes the thing at the bottom. It lets it spread back over, so... That's all you need to do to fix that now. That's a nice little addition. So that netherrack, when the bone mill dispenses, will uh, fix the nylium. I don't think I want to get my head into any of this redstone again. I just want to add the blast chamber and make this thing work, right? Right, Muriel Wolf 1. Thank you so much for your subscription. I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the stream. I really like this music, says very, very creative username. It's uh, Jim Kirkwood. It's some um, sort of fantasy dungeon synth type stuff before there was dungeon synth. It's really awesome. Very Lord of the Rings inspired. Okay, so schematic load X blast. Let's see what it looks like when we paste it. Okay, a bunch of stuff falls out of the world. So yeah, like we got some modifications to make here. All this terrain and stuff. Oh, did that work? It did. Oh yeah, I kind of don't need that in my offhand. Right, let's bust out the rest of this. So yeah, we're going to hook these two things up together. I also, I kind of need to like minimize the amount of obsidian this thing uses. Now, down at the water level, if I'm not mistaken, the water shields the blast. So the bottom area here doesn't need to be um, obsidian. So that saves us a whole bunch, right? But then everything else, I think I'll play it on the safe side and keep it all here. I could even get like extra... Ah, oh, look at this. When we moved it, some stuff popped off. I could get extra paranoid and perhaps protect one or two things a little more. I know like the redstone torches are a little on the vulnerable side. In fact, now that I've said that out loud, it just maybe makes sense to uh, try and shield them a little bit more. I'm not really seeing an issue with doing that. But on this side, yeah, I'm a little more limited in what I can do. Right? What does it... No, 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 no. It moves them at the other level, so that being there is not an issue. Huh. Okay, these, these are... In fact, that makes them really well shielded. That was one of the problems, right? This one here is not positioned the same way. Yeah, so they're, they're like fully surrounded. This one here could be surrounded even more. But then this one here is like an odd one out. So it's detecting when something comes to the end here, which essentially I could possibly do with a observer. But then, just looking at what's in and around, it's going to be tricky to get that right. So this sends the signal over here, and then goes off that way and pushes everything in. And sends a signal that way. So this is like the most vulnerable torch. But, that should maybe be enough to shield it. So, some good modifications so far. Double checking that everything's good can't remember if this was disabled for testing or something, right? Looks like if we detect something down here, it will create a signal. Then it gets blown up, it goes away, and it pulls it back down. That, to me, looks like it's ready to go. Uh, Twee on Twitch says, Diagonals don't block TNT. Oh, okay. Well, 
I, I'm not sure what you're saying there. Um, how does the diagonal manifest? Does it mean I put blocks like that? You know, where is the diagonal here? Like, there's. Hmm. So, like, are we saying that that is not protected by these blocks? Like, it's a little obscure to describe it as just diagonal. Hey X, making all the logs go in one row isn't productive since you make six or more logs in one second, which means you'll need six or more machines. Instead, let them collect in a tube like you normally would. Yeah, I don't know what you're getting at there. Um, our machine is ready for a blast chamber. YDYT, thank you for 14 months. Appreciate it. FW Games, 37 months. Wow, big numbers. Black Steel, 53. 14 months. Appreciate it, my dude. Thank you for all your amazing support. Not employing B-Dub's perfect redstone. I mean, this is in the spirit of B-Dub's doing redstone right here, you know. Like, when you're when you're a builder stepping into the world of redstone, you're going to do janky stuff like this. Um, you know, and here's me, Mr. Redstone, uh, more than builder, and I'm doing the janky stuff. This is no Il Mango Psycraft blast chamber, but it doesn't have to be, because we made it ourselves, and that is the fun of what I'm trying to trying to get back to you know just all of this sort of like other people have created the most optimal perfect thing it's cool it has its place right now I want to enjoy the process of seeing a problem and then finding the solution with the redstone and that is something you can't do by building someone else's farm right now the best way for us to copy and paste this I believe is to stand here where the logs will come in. So we copy that, we head over here, We're gonna have to knock it back just one or two blocks. I think if I stand here, dang, now, now the blast chamber is a little close to some other stuff, but see how we get on yeah look we've got some redstone popping off so I kind of feel like I should uh, again you know backups 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 where did that one pop off from they seem to pop off from the pistons I, I feel like everything else is in place yeah really great um, lesson for you in general if you have data on a computer that is valuable to you learn how to back it up take the time to do the backups if you're like ah it'll be all right even if it'll be all right, everyone gets hit by some sort of old computer problems or anything at some point. Like, having a backup, really, really good idea. Wow, that looks so cool over there. So this is the one that we'll actually run the test on. The one behind us can be... Ooh, our reference material. It sounds like, to me, it just... Uh, it probably ran and grew a tree... No, it didn't do anything over there. Must admit, I'm a little concerned about how it does sink right away, but we seem to be good. Wow, this okay, we are like amazingly close to testing this. Dang, that thing looked like really crazy when uh, it first loaded, and now that we get closer, all of those magical shapes are disappearing. I wanted to learn more about the magical shapes. Dang. There's like some Minecraft mysteries like there. Why did they generate that? What's going on over here? You know, homie? What is this about? Some crazy trench run. What is this terrain? <laughs> like, this doesn't look reasonable, does it? I, this has got to be um, maybe something to do with it trying to use its biome blending. Because this is the chunk border of the void world, right? There's the glass. And then... And then the next chunk, like, we'll look at it. It's chunk aligned. The next two, even, they're, they're super quirky. F maybe even three chunks. Like, it's something's happened with the generation here that's caused some absolute quirkiness. Also, that's probably not the bottom of the world. So, let's go down. Because there'll be... Oh, interesting. What, what Y value are we at? Minus 76? Oh, minus 64. No, okay, so that's the bottom, right. Yeah, and there's all your deeps, like... 
Fascinating. It's just, you know, try to create a lava lake at the bottom. Got some weird floaty generation stuff. It's actually, it's actually like an ocean biome that's been cut off. Huh. How odd. I wonder if it will continue like this all the way down. Because I feel like what we looked at on the other side was similar, but it did this, didn't it? It just came straight over. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, that is something, isn't it? I'm going to take a screenshot of that. That might be a thumbnail or something. X, are you procrastinating, says Leo, is Marco. I am not procrastinating. I am enjoying the uh, oddities of world generation. But yeah, you know, like you don't want to go too off track, right? We, we know what we're doing. We're testing this next. And then if it's good, we're going to build it on Hermitcraft as it is. Not going to compact it anymore. So... I think all I got, I feel, I feel tense, even though, like, we got a backup, so I shouldn't really feel that tense, but this is the farm now running, and in theory, it's going to produce a tree every time. Did you see that? I feel like it's already broken. No, no, wait. Something, something's gone wrong. Or has it? Uh, we might just be having, hmm, we might just be having like some initial starting blues. Like if I had of uh, removed all of this before, interesting. Okay, let's just remove this and see what happens. Like, right now, this is you know what I know what the problem is. It's not using relativistic coordinates. <laughs> uh, so now I need new coordinates, right? Okay, don't worry. We can make this run fast for our test. Right, that one's now going to start growing trees if we come over here and do the same thing. Uh, what I need to do is get those numbers. Paste them in here. Oh yeah, I don't need the whole command. Jeez. Alright. Put a 20 there. And now... Both of them should grow every time. How in the heck has it gone all the way up there? Ah, oh, look, we've got something breaking. This might, this might be more of an issue of... Of having copy and pasted the contraption that something is different. In fact, this one would be the original back here. Kind of looks fine to me, so why did this one mess up? Has it pushed more in? It's, uh, it's struggling again. Yeah, look, it pushes in like a whole tree and then it's in trouble. And then this don't work. Dang. Okay, I think I'm going to just turn it off and uh, give it a kickstart or something. Like, why is that one not pushing? Oh, I can see why it's not pushing. This is the issue here then, isn't it? That broke because of this. Right. Hmm. I think this probably pushes too fast for that one. Oh, there you go, yeah. That's... Okay, now my entire blast chamber might need to be zero-ticked as a result of that. So this thing... Move, oh, no. It moves blocks way faster than this can handle. Right, now... If you think of it as speed, like here's this thing coming through at a particular speed... How do you slow it down? Because there's this pause time after the blocks come up here. But I, just off the top of my head, have no idea how you slow down 
because this thing has to go across here in particular. I mean, I guess maybe what you do is make like a transfer lane where like all of them get pushed across and then something moves them across slower. That would be my guess. So is there a quick remedy for this problem? There's probably not one where we don't move the blast chamber. That's for sure. Uh, Lucaro is suggesting that we use a lower, slower elevator. My issue with that is that we've built the entire contraption around the elevator. So not only will we rebuild the elevator, then we'll probably rebuild everything else. Um, too much work. So why don't we... You know, this gives us the opportunity to create a contraption that is probably like has a very rare use case. If you're good enough to use this stuff, you probably don't ever need this, right? Because I'm not good enough to use this stuff, we're going to use it. Another JT, thank you for 62 months. Jim's Boss Slice, or Jimbo Slice. There you go, much better. 94, thank you for the prime, my dude. Hope you're both enjoying stream. Double piston extender to push two layers. I, you know, I'll read messages, but they won't always make sense in my head. I've got no idea what that means. But yeah, when the when the last one of these gets set off, that's that could be a cue for this thing to push them all across and then have a second contraption feed them in. So I'm going to sort of go in that direction. Now, we've got 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. In theory, eleven things can come across at once. So I feel like it's probably best to move the blast chamber out of the way for now. Uh, let's go down here. Just pop it over there. So this thing needs to have like 11. Right? And then it needs to push them across and put them on a different system. Already it looks like the space is too tight. Maybe this should have been the other way around. Uh, Diamond Trash Bag, thank you for the four months of support, my dude. Appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the stream. We might also want to look for an event that's easier to wire it up. But yeah, maybe we could push down, push up, push across. And then I don't really know what we're doing to move the blocks in. Alternatively, maybe this is too much work. Maybe we do need to refine what we're doing here. Another another potential solution... Hmm, is to maybe even drop like TNT here. Right? Like, that's as far as these two things can push. I also added in this thing that means you don't have to keep that clear. So you can have trees back up. The only thing is, like, the height is kind of, like, not that great for TNT last chamber. But for a TNT duper, it might not be the worst thing ever. What do y'all think, chat? Should we perhaps... Not go this... I mean, like, again, I can't even think of where to begin with this thing. Uh, we did build one thing that might be semi-relatable. More boom booms, says Zoo Zuga Zuga. More boom booms. Like, this thing over here might be... Yeah, you push all the blocks across. Oh, this is actually it. This is what we would want, right? So all the blocks get pushed across. And then they get pushed out one by one. There's a button for activating this, so... That's literally the contraption that we need. I don't know if it will run... Let's try and get this thing into it, right? I'm going to take a screenshot of that. That'll help me rebuild it. Kazoo, thank you for three months of support, my dude. Appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Lucaro says all my hard work for nothing. Ah, uh, what do you mean? I'm keeping the I'm keeping it. And it wasn't for nothing. Look at all the contraptions that we built along the way. Oh, you're doing something over here. I 
I think the issue is, like, wherever you try and make this instant... I mean, maybe you can make all the ones on the corner instant, but, like... Maybe we jump the gun there. I'll, I'll let you have a go at that. I'm going to look at that screenshot again. So the way we did it... So you would need an event to feed these in from the side, first of all. I mean, that's awkwardly already pointing into that piston, so that's not good. Dang it, just... yeah, like that. So, when the last one of these fires... Um, oh god, this is so much like annoying redstone so this thing will, will push out to there so we could hmm we can detect it right and it'll probably pulse twice may not be the worst thing ever What block am I going to use? This is going to be a... Oh, I didn't even put it there. It's going to be a real uh, botch job, this one. Real botch job. It could it could just so easily go wrong. This is, this is getting to the point, though, where there's like... There's so much redstone going on, where clearly it's like... Probably not the best path to take. Anyway, uh, so that happens. Then we need something to detect the next bit. So now all of these things will be here. It's also like uncomfortably close to this thing. Uh, is that actually right? They're going to be one over. Yeah, I've put this in the wrong spot. Stack 10. Um, need some observers. Yeah, what I should be doing here is using that stack command more. Note block. I, I do not have a lot of faith in this, but <laughs> you know, let's build it. Let's see what happens, and uh, it could be a bit of fun if it works, right? Right then, when it comes to powering this stuff, you need one extra repeater, and then you need that. And luckily, look, it don't touch. Thank goodness. So that, in theory, will push everything along at a new speed. She's kind of crazy. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. This should all be over that way, one block. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So... Huh. It, we might actually need to move it over a couple of times because we also need to... Right, I need to fly over to the other one and just double check a little bit. He's defusing a bomb. It feels like that. Anyway, it's becoming very apparent to me that this, this project needs a little bit of rethinking again. Just uh, experiment with some different ideas. Maybe take it in a different direction. I don't think I want to do that all on stream. You know, let it let it sit, let it settle. We're going to get on the Hermitcraft server real soon. Uh, we just need to go check the starting condition of this. Which was to get a single pulse after that got powered. So... I think we're just detecting a block and creating a single pulse, so it should be should be pretty straightforward-ish, I hope. Just redo that piston line into being in the blast chamber, says uh, Twee on Twitch. That is what we are currently doing. We're refeeding it into the blast chamber. So, I think probably what will make more sense is for this signal to inform what goes on over there. The obvious thing is just getting it over there is going to be a right old pain because of all this other stuff that it's close to. You know, another event that happens around this time is this piston and the... Hmm, I don't look right. I mean, technically... I think there's I think there's one other floor here. I think all of this starts one block back, right? Because the first one's got a push. And then that makes all of that touch. 
So we're going to have to have to make a couple of changes. This is this is really just for the fun of it now, right? Like <laughs> no illusions. This is this is not going to be the final contraption, but it's going to like, hey, does this work? So we've got all of those things. Right, so now what we'll detect is when this thing is there, we can have a signal here. And it needs to only be set off once, therefore, we have that. Now, hmm, I think, I think, did it have a repeater? I don't think it had a repeater after it. I think that's it, all right? So, we'll do our own testing, but uh, let's get, right, so the next, okay, this is it, this is the test, all right? So I do that. Interesting. So this thing over here didn't get the signal, right? I think that's because of that. And then that's actually in the correct spot. But there also, there wasn't any blocks underneath. All right, now, so this is the test now. The test has changed. Oh, it actually works. Oh, it actually works. No way. Right, so if I move this blast chamber over this direction by one, two, three, four blocks. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Thanks for the GG's in chat. Look, see my redstone skills are getting better, right? Even, oh, well, that, that's not redstone skills. <laughs> that's missing blocks. Even if like, even if you're not good and you can't build the ill mango stuff, like, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. See, I think I said four blocks, right? That will go into where we need it to go. Brilliant. Then we need to replace this redstone. Right, and then over the back here, you can see that there's some quirkiness. Kind of looks like everything's good. Something always goes wrong. Remember that, peeps. Something always goes wrong until it doesn't. Uh, I don't. I don't know that I fixed that. I didn't fix it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Or maybe I did. Ah, uh, might have jumped the gun on one thing. So next time that pushes across, that's in the wrong place. So if that only creates one signal, the whole thing might be... Yeah, that's... Uh, that I'm just going to be very lazy and do it like that. So then this over here apparently didn't do anything. It kind of looks like it should do something. Alright, let's simulate it. Block here. Oh, 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 it's doing things. Okay, right. So now we just got to fix up this bit. Yeah, not really sure why that, you know, we have issues with that. Maybe it wasn't broken because it did push a bunch of stuff up and then, yeah. Right, so now the green tree's going to grow. Yep, yeah. oh, then the red tree's going to grow. God, one little bit of redstone lag could just destroy this farm, though. Dang. Oh, that's... Wait, no, okay, okay, I understand what's going wrong. Turn it off, turn it off, I understand what's going wrong. This thing's still... Ah, they're going to call that a derp, aren't they? They're going to call it a derp. We need one there. Oh, my God. Things be happening, right. So then when this breaks, it'll come back through like this. Get yourself out like that. Uh, 
Oh, do you see? Right, okay. I want to make a change there. I can see that being a big problem. Oops. Maybe that maybe that'll be good enough. I've got a feeling that might be a little too early. Like which is why I'm thinking maybe put a bit of extra delay on it. Where's my wire at? Yeah, let's give that a try. Let's give that a try. The fact that I'm turning this thing on and off and it's not breaking as well is kinda good. Yes, one one solid push, right, and it needs to happen after the last one comes through, which it did. The timing there is really good. The only thing is, does this thing go the whole way through? Oh my god, it doesn't, does it? Look, there's your answer. This thing's too slow. It's been uh, it's been struggling over here. Very curious. Well, I think that answers our question. Like, it is possible. This is too slow. We couldn't make this run faster. So you're always going to have this problem here. And it's not really very fixable, is it? You can have extra blocks poking in and out. But as for the blast chamber... Oh, no! What happened here? Oh. Oh, look at me and my stupid placing of these blocks. Totally messed something up. Uh, not only that, like, why do they not push across here? I should really stop this thing now and look at the blast chamber. Why did, uh, why did these ones never get pushed in? I don't, I don't see a reason for that to not happen. And where was that obsidian block that I moved out of the way? Like, it was, it was actually there, and that is not a spot. So... Something weird happened with the blast chamber. That's not a secret. <laughs> Look at this down here. Right, let's let's fix the blast chamber. I mean, yeah, so the side that for some reason didn't push down um, is the one that's supposed to do that. So when I... Yeah, I, I, I broke that obsidian too quickly. I, I, I thought I understood what was going on, but I didn't. So when we put a block here... Okay, we're not going all the way around just yet. Maybe that one getting fired has something to do with it. I'm not sure if that's normal behavior. Right, so the next one should push everything in, but these ones over here weren't pushing in, right? But that time they did. <laughs> you know, that time they did. Huh. How odd. Is it because I wasn't pushing them in fast? So me me stopping might have you know helped it somewhat. So uh, this time no stop. I think I placed one... Hmm. There's definitely something quirky going on here. Anyway, we're very close to this thing now working, so I'm going to turn that back on. We'll just accept that sometimes extra blocks pop out the side of this thing. We've got new blocks coming through. Yeah, some... Okay, on occasion, something backs... Backs it up or blocks it off, right? Okay, I think I got it going again. Didn't they didn't push in? It's got to be a timing thing. They didn't push in. Right, I would like to see the blast chamber work though, so uh, we'll do the rest of these manually. Oh, apparently this thing's still running. 
thought I just turned it off, you know. I should probably get rid of some of these blocks down here. They're going to uh, start messing with the push limit before long. Also, I think um, I think you need the water in the middle, right? So having them here might mess with it. Let's get it all at the same level. And then feed a few more blocks in, because the next one's going to do it, right? That being said... No, no, it looks like it's ready to go. We're like a couple of blocks away. Here we go. There's then also the issue that this thing just keeps feeding... Whoa! That's so good! And it looks like we do in fact need a ring of obsidian in the middle. That's so good. That is so good. But we, we have to learn so much more about this contraption because the timing of blocks going in like might even mess with the explosion as well, you know? Oh, but that is so cool. How many blocks did it just wreck from one TNT? And our obsidian encasings seem to have kept the uh, redstone torches together for now. I wonder what Spokey was up to then. I think we're going to put a pin in this. It's been really interesting. Testing with diorite blocks. Uh, looks like they've wired it up so that there's like instant pistons going on. Does this work, Spokey? Can we give it a whirl? So yeah, the issue, the issue I'm predicting now is that if this thing pushes the blocks in too fast, um, this thing might get activated twice, but then that pulls that down, then it might go up again. So you might end up with multiple TNT blasts. You have a try. I haven't tested it with a tree farm, but manually it was a bit meh. Let's do it manually then. So, oh, here's a little idea that I had a second ago, by the way. Um, you need a particular type of block. So if you get... Oh, I've already got a slab. If you get a slab, uh, that's in the way. Huh. Okay, it won't work anymore. But I was thinking, like, how do you hold down right click, right? That looks pretty darn fast to me. So how close is it? Right, it looks like it's suffering the same issue on this side where not enough blocks are coming through, right? Which is kind of weird. Like, don't know what causes that. Let's put them in fast again. So, did it push out on that side? It did. Oh, wait, this is the blast bit. I know what the issue is. It's over here. No wire going to it. So, we'll simulate that again by uh, putting that there. And then doing a little... Uh-huh. That pulls down. And it goes amazing blast right now the question is like can it just continuously run and I can't actually see what it's doing on the opposite side but I can kind of see the uh, pistons extend yeah it's just not pushing them out equally that's really kind of annoying so the blast chamber isn't, you know, entirely reliable yet. Might have something to do with these pistons on top. Who knows? But, like, you can feed in a lot of blocks. Okay, now it's... Now, you see, now it's very close to going, so... This time, I'm going to keep feeding blocks, right? And we're going to watch the TNT drop, and I don't know what's going to happen. Because I've got a weird feeling it's, yeah, it's potentially just set the TNT off, thing off twice. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, there goes another TNT. Maybe it works like that just fine, but that's probably not good. It kind of looked like we got away with that second TNT going in. Fascinating. So, essentially, like, if they're coming down too far... Yeah, look at that. Okay, that's not surprising at all. So, if they're coming down too fast, um, it, it messes this thing up. So, and obviously, if it, the TNT comes down too fast, this gets destroyed. So, what you... The, the issue is, 
if they're coming in fast and they can come in fast from this thing, we probably need to detect this higher up. So it can blast more frequently. I I'm not entirely sure. Like, if we detect it higher up, then the logs can go lower. But they should, in theory, still get... Yeah, like, maybe we can protect it like that. Um, that might help, right? Now, I think the next thing you would want is then... To create... To take the pulse... And convert it into something that can sort of outlive the next time it gets updated, right? Or better yet, we want it to cool down. We have to wait. So nothing has to happen in front of this. I don't know if any of this is the right logic. But uh, again, we'll just try some stuff. So the logic here would be... Let's get a bit of redstone in here. Right, we've now got a comparator decay clock, but that's going to keep activating it over and over again, which is okay. Um, what are we doing there? Why not the other way? Oh yeah, it wouldn't work the other way. Right. Um, I just didn't. I just pick out an observer. Okay. So at that level, when it gets pushed up, it will create the pulse that we need to go up here. This is where I need a clicker, like, uh, hang on, I think I already have a clicker. Okay, so if I do F3T, right, yeah, then I can press X. Aha, ha, <laughs> forgot about that. Let's hope I wired this up correctly. Okay, stop. Oops, I've destroyed a piston by stopping. Why did it not create a pulse? Oh, ne one, look, it never got pushed down there. Again, it comes back to, like, the consistency of it pushing it down again. Lucro says I can be your clicker. That would be amazing, actually. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, you, you click, and I'll run around frantically down here and watch what's happening. But yeah, it didn't push down. I mean, look, it's never pushed down here in the middle. Why is that? Why does this one not get pushed down? That actually shouldn't... Wait a minute, something's wrong. This is why it's not working. Something's changed. Ah, oh, look. Look. This is wrong. That's not supposed to have redstone on it, and that's not supposed to be there. This does a really important job of updating the pistons. Uh, that might be why we've seen the inconsistency. I hope, because then it means... Yeah, uh, feel free to click away. <clears throat> We're watching. I might do the trick. Uh, also, there's a piston missing here. That doesn't help. Did it work? No, we're st still not getting one over here. Not getting one on this corner. Why are we putting quartz in there? <laughs> no, we're not clicking anymore. I, I, I think it might make sense if I do the clicking. Wow, what's going on now? It's whoa, 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 whoa! Hang on, hang on! Don't, don't, don't! No, no, no! Don't do that. That's placing it faster than it'll ever come through, and it's just breaking stuff as a result. Dang! Right, I'll do, I'll do the clicking. Um, okay, so do that. Right, that's much better. Okay, now it's coming at a, a speed where we can see what's going on. Well, something broke again. Oh. I think we're probably at the point now where it's uh, it's pretty much just done. Something's, something's probably broken all over the place. Dang, there goes the TNT. I don't even know. And that's broken. I give up. I think that's the sign to give up. Like, too much stuff is broken on this thing. Don't really know what's going on anymore. <laughs> cool. But yeah. Ah, so much to be learned, right? I think we're going to get on the Hermitcraft server now, you know? And uh, I've got that screenshot open on my other screen. I haven't been paying attention to anything. 
The last noise in the air. I think we read it out loud, but Kazoo, if I missed it, thank you for your three months with the Prime. Um, yeah, right, so, wow, we overran it a bit there with the Blast Chamber, that's for sure. And by the way, 1,300 peeps are tuned in today. Thank you everyone for coming by. Be sure to hit the follow button here on Twitch if you've never done so before. So, my main thing to do on the server was to gather materials for a build. I'm sure there was one other thing. Actually, now that I see it, there is another thing. It's not really a uh, in-game thing. But I need to I need to get, like, well, I've got all of those blocks. I need 679 blocks of moss. Is that right? <laughs> uh, that don't sound right to me. I might have to use a shop on that one. There's other stuff here that I need to go get together. Dang. Well, we'll head over to the base. Uh, I want to switch to standing. Let's take care of that first. We're going to... Oh, we should totally do, like, a quest. Like an on-stream... Yeah, an on-stream quest. On-stream? Doesn't sound right. Right, I'm going to switch to standing, peeps. So bear with me. I've actually, uh, I've actually, like, stood at the computer the whole day today. And only just now did I decide to sit, and then I overdid it. And I hear a noise in me here, we'll get to that. My uh, my screen's all messed up at the moment, I've got all the wrong things open, so let's get chat back up, because uh, I had an idea for a stream, right? The next stream I'm going to do will be on Saturday morning, and that will be a variety stream game, so I'm going to play a puzzle game. Then on Sunday, I'm thinking of doing a talky time with X type thing. Now, in the past, we did something for the Asuma Says channel where we were going to have this like monthly live podcast. I tried like highlighting some comments. I kind of want to do something like that, but I don't think I want to talk anything like political or current events. I think I just want to talk about the channel. So I was going to make like a little breakdown of um, things that I wanted to tell you that have been going on. For example, I've been working on a video for about three months that's coming out tomorrow. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of not nervous. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to step into a new territory here on on YouTube. I want to start making some scripted thought videos that dive into various aspects of the game, and they take a lot of work. And it's going to be like a, a bit of a transition. And I feel like I've I've started with this video with like a the sort of idea that you'd really want to spread and reach. You know, when you make these videos, the hope is that they'll uh, be somewhat viral, and that's like a new way to run the channel to get some healthy videos out there that bring in new viewers, do some interesting like material on various topics. But like getting started, you you kind of want to. With any project, you just want to start, and you probably don't want to throw your best ideas out first, because you know you need to learn, you need to figure out how it works. And uh, I'm kind of thrown out one of the best ideas straight away, so it makes me a little nervy on that front. But I I accept that that it will potentially just you know not not do what I want it to do, and that's fine. All right, that just happens, but. Um, oh, look at that. This was me last time. This is daily. Right? D is daily. Fix something, anything. Wasn't there one for cleaning up some of the things around this area? We could certainly do some of these things on uh, stream. Okay, these are not the ones that uh, I thought were in here. Right, the f they won't be in the fandom. I don't know where the one I'm looking for is. There's one I made note of. Hmm. Quite confused now. <laughs> Let's use the let's use the books at the top. It's also really tricky to talk about three different topics at once, right? Like I said, I'm thinking of doing this like chatty stream type thing where I tell you what's been going on in and around the channel, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I would like is like a bit of a Q&A session. So if y'all want to tweet me some questions, my my um, the thing that I will say about that is like. 
I don't know, think out, think outside the box a little, you know, like sometimes I get asked questions that are just things that I've asked over and over again, or it's like, why don't you, why don't you reveal your face? And it's like, yeah, let's talk about that again. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just, I just feel like it would be nice to, like every now and then you read comments where you're like, oh man, and it just gets your brain ticking over and thinking. It's like, if I were live streaming right now, I'd be waffling about this comment that someone left. Maybe I should actually resort to that. That really worked last time, now I think about it. I, uh... Yeah, I, I took a bunch of comments that I knew I could talk about on the stream. So maybe actually I'll just do that. I'll go look for some of those comments. It is so... What am I doing? It is just so annoying <laughs> to try and do two things at once on Hermitcraft. Let's focus on this now and we'll come back to that topic when it makes sense. So, these are infrastructure quests. I'm not sure that they're daily. Right, I'm not doing an economy quest. It might be a community quest. It's not an adventure or an entertainment. Maintenance it might be. Not a shenanigan, not a fandom thing, and not a royal thing. Okay, it's not a tribute. That's the weekly category, right? But where's the daily? Because you've got unique... Then you've got... It's super confusing. Unique quest. Weekly quest. Wait, so there should be, like, daily. Did there used to be one here that disappeared? Yeah, there's no daily book. And I, I thought it was a daily thing. One appears to have been destroyed. Yeah, if there was one there. I, I thought I even saw it in here, right? Like, these economy ones are all sort of the same thing. It's not going to be an adventure. So, I think we've looked for everything. I can't find it. I, I like, read it down and everything. I was like, I'll do that on stream. Huh. Right, we said it was not a shenanigan, and it's probably not a community thing. I don't know. Oh, we'll skip that then. Huh. Yeah, okay, right. Confusion over. Let's just get back on track. I really want to, like, it's my ambition to get better at articulating myself, especially on stream, like, <laughs> and I get annoyed when I, like, all of a sudden I'm just in a, a moment where I'm like, I'm trying to talk about that thing, then I started talking about this thing, and I'm trying to do something on camera, and it's not making, none of this is making any sense. Death message Ren, says Alex. Oh, I just, I won't bother. Um, I don't know. I'll investigate it another time. Like, I'm not going to message Ren right now. We'll just crack on with something else. Maybe write down what you were talking about, says Crappy Toast. Uh, I don't need to write any of that down, no. So let's see if we can multitask this. So yeah, I mean, what do y'all, what do y'all expect? What do you want to see from a stream where, uh, like, I won't have a game open; it'll just be straight talking. I'll probably have like a background image and the avatar up. I might even put the comments on screen or something like that. But it'll mostly be like a tune in and listen type deal, right? The amount of blocks I've got to get prepared for this build is like, is like silly. Now I've got them off my screen. Actually, so amethyst blocks, I've got those. That's good. Gonna need a bunch of mud and mud, like a crazy, I'm gonna have to make loads of mud. That's what I'm gonna need to do right now. I can, I can already tell. That being said, there's quite a bit of mud there. So I need 400 mud bricks, three, like 200 odd mud, so 128, 256, all right. Do the same again over here. And then that brings you up to uh, 320. So that and that were just about there. So then I need a whole bunch of wheat, a bunch of wheat. As you'll see, I've got tons of it over here. Forget, I forget what the conversion rate is. Where's my crafting bench over here? A discussion on the direction the community wants Minecraft to take in the future, says a strong dose. I feel like what will dominate that conversation right now is just the latest update, right? And at this point, 
I can talk to some of you about it and you'll listen and some of you won't. But also the way I've been communicating has been a bit of a learning curve. Uh, and I, I, I've maybe not... Like, I feel like... What's, what's the old thing about, um, like, retrospection and whatnot? What they call it? Hindsight, right? Like, hindsight can tell you so much. And if I could go back and communicate my thoughts and opinions and stuff all over again, it would sound quite different. The core of what I wanted to do was say to the Minecraft community, like, be careful of this outrageous reaction to what is taking place. Because the outrage will go... It will go off to the side from the truth. So, like, there is this thing happening, which is one of those most divisive things where it's not clear-cut, it's all messy and grey, and so many people can interpret so many different views on it. And what will happen is that it will be extremified, and the outrage will be out of proportion with what's taking place. Now, a lot of people don't feel like it's out of proportion with what's taking place, but the point is, like, you can actually be really angry about what's taking place. You're perfectly fine to really hate what's what's taken place with this moderation thing. But we have to, like, argue about it or talk about it with the proper facts of what's happening, and there is so much just exaggeration about what's taking place there is so much inserting of narrative and whatnot that the original conversation like what it should actually be about is just it's a mirage almost at this point and that's like that, that's just this whole mess and i feel like i've almost contributed it by just getting my first video on the topic just completely wrong. The tone of it, like the direction, uh, just got it all wrong. Oh, I just realized, wait, what did I delete? Like mud bricks, I need a bunch of packed mud. Oh, so they're gonna be mud bricks. So then I need like four stacks of packed mud. So I need to convert those and then get four more, which means we need to create some stuff. We can talk about this today because um, I need to take the time to think about what to talk about in that stream i i, I kind of realize like sometimes you kind of want like you know i know that it's you out there that are going to give me the things to talk about in the stream but i don't have the words to like prompt you for what it is so i have to go looking for it and figure out like hey we're going to talk about this we're going to talk about that and I haven't done that yet so let's knock that one on the head uh let's focus on something we can talk about like this uh this whole uh moderation thing that's going on right now so I read my comments and I just see complete exaggerations and misinformation about uh, what's going on. And how do we make mud again? Is it clay in with water bottles? I think it's clay with water bottles because clay is also in here. <laughs> Can't even remember. It's um, I, I see like clear misinformation and a misunderstanding of a lot of things here. Now because I'm on like a different side of the fence is how it's perceived. I'm not like trying to downplay or down talk or like dismiss. I'm literally saying like this is if we're going to be up oh it's mud. If we it's dirt. If we're going to be upset about this and like want to make a change or whatever, you kind of need to go about it the right way with the right information. Um and you know as of what you're seeing right now, the whole thing's a disaster of anger. Um and Moyang are probably just going to have a bit of a battle on their hands because it looks like what's going to happen is every time they try and do something with an update I think a lot of people are just going to try and find exploits and then everyone's going to talk about the exploits and how bad the system is and like this is just going to be a vicious cycle where we're not really addressing the actual problem right it's just going to be this back and forth I, I think I think at this point though it is a fair criticism to say that Mo Yang or Microsoft or whoever's made this decision is not listening to the community to some extent because the response has been essentially no 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 we don't want this but you can always argue the vocal minority and the vocal minority thing is difficult to get your head around when the vocal minority seems really big and loud and you're a part of it and you feel strongly about it and there's all these other people that feel strongly as well the thing about the vocal minority is just sort of understanding the uh, 
basic concept of it. I need to get like other dirt out of my inventory to do this, don't I? Is that it doesn't like you can go to the comments on my video and read comment after comment after comment from someone who's upset, angry, outraged. But if you look at the like to dislike ratio, it's majority likes. Does this mean there's loads of people going, you know what, I don't think this this moderation thing's a big deal to me? But they're not motivated to join in the discussion. They might be motivated to keep quiet because I don't want to get involved in this. I don't care about the moderation thing. I know what Mo Yang are doing. I'm fine with it. That might be someone's attitude, right? I've totally forgotten how to use this contraption. Because I have to hold shift. And then can I just... Am I clicking left or can I hold both? Oh, don't I have to use a different shovel? It's coming back to me now. Right, so I'll probably goof this thing up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know how many water bottles are supposed to be in there. <laughs> Let's see if it just continues working. There we go. I think I can even press F3 and T and just, like, leave it at that. And DHMO. I don't know what DHMO is. Everyone who's ever come into contact with dehydro dehydrogen monoxide has died. It flows through so many of our pipes into our homes. Okay, I don't know nothing about this, my dude, so... Um, Probably not the place to talk about it. Haley Bailey says, I think private servers should have a choice, otherwise it's fine. Yeah, I feel like um, letting them have a choice is something we could all rally about. I think even some of... Um, I've seen some of its staunch defenders even say giving them the owners of the servers a choice was a good idea. The hydrogen oxide is a water. Yeah, I had a feeling it might be something like that as well. If people don't weigh in on the conversation, though, do they even get a say? I'd almost say it's similar to not voting and then complaining about the result. I, yeah, there's definitely an issue about like how do you how do you really figure out what the consensus is, right? In my mind, this decision like we can probably skip that because this decision really isn't about Mo Yang finding out what the community wants. This is clearly like a top-down decision from Microsoft. I would not be surprised if it was perhaps motivated by some form of legalities with changing legislation about um, laws revolving around, you know, privacy and protection of individuals online. That's, you know, all I can do is speculate there, right? So I'm trying to make it clear that's a speculation. They, you know, I don't think polling the audience and truly trying to figure out what the audience wants was on the cards. And, and all of that's not a democracy anyway. Like, designing the game has never been a democracy. Um, Mo Yang have, have always been close to the audience in some way and taken in feedback. And I've seen that as I follow their updates. I see interactions, I see how a back and forth with the community informs parts of the update. But I also see comments from people who are upset and angry. Mo Yang never listen to us. Mo Yang never do this. And it's just a matter of perception. It's like they can't listen to every single voice. And so if you're someone who's like not voicing your opinions or shouting in the wrong places. I mean, even if you're in the right places, there's no guarantee Mo Yang see and consider your ideas. And considering the size of the player base, there's no way they can rationally consider everyone's opinion and come to some sort of conclusion. It's just not really a possibility, right? Um, so when you factor in all of those things, we were never really going to be able to like reach a consensus on this. It's, uh, it's just not feasible. But this is why I think like you've got to talk about these things correctly. We can't say like Mo Yang should you know, do what the community wants because that's clearly nothing to do with this decision to begin with, right? Like, this, in my mind, this is a top-down decision. Like, something's come down the chain of command. And the reason I say that is just the nature of the rollout, right? Like, just this trying to sweep it under the rug, quick rollout. Here's moderation, you know. And fundamentally, I... You know, I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Like, I'm not going to wave the flag for it that much. But I do think it can do good. And I do think um, if it's done right, it can be really good. And I understand that there are times when moderation can go wrong. But we, you know, like, what kind of data do we have? What, what can we really know and say about all of this? Because 
the examples that get chucked around are like, you can be banned for saying this, and the moderators are going to take it all out of context. And it's like, it's all speculative. It's all speculative. I had someone tell me that they did the math and that they calculated that the moderators would need to... Uh, would need to... Um, moderate 300 messages a second. I'm just thinking like... I mean, what, are you, what, what data are you basing this on? Because Mojang do actually release uh, statistical data about who's playing the game, monthly players and all these sorts of things. But then, like, you know, so how do you then determine how many of those players are going to file a report when there is an incident? It, like, it's pure speculation. And you can probably pull any kind of numbers out of the hat if that's your starting point. And, and again, that's like, it's a bad argument to say that. It's a bad argument to go, this is terrible because, you know, Mo Yang uh, have to do 300, 300 moderation issues a second. How can a team possibly deal with that? We don't know the size of their team. What if the size of the team was 10,000 people? Then all of a sudden you might be like, oh, maybe that does scale. So, like, there's all these unknowns and I just... Like, we shouldn't be upset and base our arguments and outrage about stuff we don't actually know. Like, let's get to the core of it. Let's really suss out what the issue is. And like, the, I feel like the opportunity to engage on that level in any way has just it's well and truly passed now. I completely disagree with people who say stuff like Mo Yang doesn't think about the community because they don't have to update. The point of updating is to keep players interested and make the game more fun. And most updates are good. But you have to sacrifice some things, for example, in moderation, to get better things. I have a feeling that a lot of people who don't like the updates will continue to play the game, because in reality, it's a great game. You can do almost anything in. Yeah, I, terrific point. 100% with you, except, like, I wouldn't tie moderation, the moderation system, into the same thing. I think everything you said about game design and then doing for the co things for the community is right. Um, so much of this is about perspective, like do you look out into the world with like a negative or a positive perspective? Because you can choose to see the worst or the best in things. Um, and I always like to think that, you know, you should build positivity off of some sort of rational footing. And for me, the rational footing in the way I talk about Mojang is that I followed them for so long by doing the snapshot videos that I see things I feel like go past a lot of players. So when I read those comments of like Mo Yang never listen, I'm like, ah, they kind of, they, they kind of like everything they're doing has gone through iterations with the audience. Maybe it just doesn't take place in the, where you're looking. Like on Twitter, I see it a lot, and um, I know they're quite active on Reddit as well. And if you actually follow the Minecraft channel and pay attention to the content they put out there, you'll see that the devs turn up in videos and talk about how they've engaged and gotten ideas and there really is like community is part of the strategy if you want to look at it through a business lens like let's say like it's part of the strategy to engage the minecraft community um just not on this occasion perhaps so yeah like god where are we going with this conversation anyway yeah that's my point basically it's just like perspective but not only that like let's argue let's base what we think and what we feel on like proper grounded stuff and you know I made my own mistakes with my video right saying saying that the moderation would be great and stuff what I was trying to do and lost sight of was say we don't know that it wouldn't be great right like you know you can say moderation is terrible it's horrible but in this world, it is possible for a group of people with money inside of Microsoft to decide that they want to build the best moderation system ever. We don't know what's happening. That's that's the point. Like you don't know. You can't say it either way, basically. Um, and my 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 reaction was to try and persuade people to like shift in a positive direction to like balance it out, and that just it didn't work to look at it that way. Shinny says, then peeps who don't like the moderation thing, you should just play on 1.18 and be done with it, no? I mean, that's, I think that's why they're angry, because that's kind of what it boils down to. It's like, ultimately, you're probably not going to reverse their decision on this, and that's your choice. And they don't want to play on 1.18, right? They want to be along for all the updates. Like the person said before, this game can keeps updating and people keep enjoying it. 
and the player base keeps growing so they're doing something right and people will want to play those updates right coarse dirt I need tons of coarse dirt <laughs> how big is this build like dang this build's massive it's Mackie I've just like that popped into my head and like is that a thing we used to say as a laugh it's Mackie I don't think that was a thing Mahusiv it's Mahusiv you can say that I'd wager it was you like you mentioned X a top-down decision probably not even Mo Yang's hand Microsoft tends to kill any social platform they touch hence the panic over them acquiring discord says Jackster Max yeah I don't know much for uh, Microsoft's track record on that but I do know that like panic is a big thing uh, when confronted with some sort of potential change oh it's that way around so like people will panic over this um, it definitely didn't seem like it was in Mo Yang's hands you know it just the the nature of the rollout just didn't seem very Mo Yang at all and I reckon you know feedback will go up the chain and they'll probably be like well this is what we have to do and we're gonna stick to it now I don't think they'll roll it back I need a bunch of spruce wood dang Don't I need tons of basalt? I don't see basalt on this list of things that I need, and I thought I needed loads of it. Oh, there it is. Smooth basalt. I need quite a lot. Let's check those noises in the air. Uh, RT Crow, thank you for your Prime subscription. And Curls of Doom, thank you for gifting a sub to Cybot2419. Cybot, thanks for tuning in, my dude. Appreciate the gifting of the subs, as always. People are speculating how the new GTA being censored as well, monitored and ruined. The show of the game says Alexandria Smith. I don't know about censoring and monitoring. I would um, again, you, like you need something to back that up, right? Like there's probably always going to be an incentive to uh, extract data from a player base, and so GTA will have a massive player base, and if they put things inside of it, they extract data about. Uh, I don't know, like your average play time and other metrics it can extract. That can be valuable to data brokers who might want to advertise and whatnot, right? So, you know, sometimes there's there's grounds uh, for these things where it's like actually it's rooted in something. But, you know, that, that could be speculation. Pure speculation. Or maybe there's a bit of info going around that suggests actually in this one they're going to do something like that. I, don't, I have no idea, but... Like, the, the important thing with the outrage is to always actually be outraged about something, like, that's legit and, and not get pulled into the feeling and just connecting the feeling to whatever sounds like it suits it. I need a bunch of purple dye. Let's all be real, though. Things can't get as bad as Diablo Immortal. I, I played Diablo Immortal for like half a minute, <laughs> literally, like, I, and then I had to put the iPad away and then I haven't touched it since. I mean, for me, Diablo's the kind of game where, like, sort of bit been there, done that. Um, its charm is probably kind of long gone for me. Like, I love the game. I love the memories of playing Diablo 2. Played the remaster a while back and that was a lot of fun, but... The hack and slash thing, like, it just, it's, it feels just a little shallow to me these days, like, if it was hack and slash plus problem solving, <laughs> then I'd probably be more on board. There we go, that's what I was looking for, and then I probably just need to break down a bunch of this, so that I've got plenty of it on hand. That being said, I might be able to die farm soon, so uh, I'll just hang on to that, I don't know, I might do something with it later. Always feels a bit weird to, like, break down the ores. Because if later on you want to use them for like something visual, it's always like, oh, now I've got to go mine it all again. It seems like you were just saying it hasn't gone wrong yet, so you can't say it will. I think the reason people get upset at you is because you are doing exactly what you are saying people shouldn't. Uh, let me copy that before it goes off the screen. I need to think that through. I'm going to read that again. That's a very interesting comment. It seems like you are just saying it hasn't gone wrong yet. That is what I'm saying. I'm saying sort of, here's this new system, wait and see. But that's a response to people saying it's wrong, it's broken. And it was like, it was in development. And again, I feel like you have to argue on 
solid ground. Um, I did learn more later on though that there were like clear clear flaws with the system. I've learned since that they like apparently they didn't verify it with any outside verification. So if you create like a sensitive system like that that can be tampered with, um, that generally you bring in an outside team to work on that, and apparently Mo Yang didn't. And, and you know, I was ignorant to that. I was kind of ignorant to the concept of that. That's uh, that's a definite red flag right there, isn't it? Like. Yeah, that don't sound good. Um, so you can't say it will. I definitely can't. I think the reason people got upset at you is because you're doing exactly what people say they shouldn't. Yeah, that last bit though, I think you're right because my argument didn't come across very well. Like I, I just mishandled it, right? But if I had, had taken the time to properly articulate what I was trying to say, you know, I, I think I would have done it right and got the point across better, which was like, before we all get outraged, look, here's what the assumptions are. Let's not make them. Let's ground the outrage and the anger on the actual core issue. Which for most people is just, I don't want to be moderated like this, which is perfectly fine. But then it's when you go and throw in the antidotes that just can't be backed up by data and stuff. That's where it falls apart to me. Like, if you're going to shout at Mojang about something that just isn't even real, you know, like... All these horror stories going around about this, that, and a third, you know. And uh, the thing wasn't even out yet, you know. And, uh... Right, got, there's just so many, like, materials here. <laughs> I can't even focus on one at a time. So I need to make a bunch of concrete as well. Blue terracotta. I think I've got some terracotta lying around I can die. I'm gonna make a stack of that yet. Yeah, I need to just look at one thing and one thing at a time. So I need to break down some lapis after all, so I can have some more dye. In a few months, the reporting tool will be yesterday's news and mainly forgotten, says Becca. Possibly. I mean, the outrage will die down. I mean, here's the thing: in five years, like it will not be the top talking topic. Um, I, it will definitely linger around for a while and it will definitely fade out. At what intervals, who knows. But I remember the outrage of when Microsoft first brought this game. And then all of a sudden, like a bunch of years go by and you don't even think about it anymore. Every now and then, though, I do, you know, I do see people comment on it about how, like, Minecraft was the beginning of the end of the game. The problem for me is I don't really, like, look at it that way. It's, I don't know. I don't think Microsoft buying the game was the worst thing ever, actually. I think it... They, I think they steered the ship really well, to be honest. Like, if the goal was to build the game's platform, monetize it, keep it updated, they, they've done all of that. I don't particularly... I wasn't particularly fond of the marketplace stuff to begin with. Still not really that fond of it, but... Um, it's good for creators. They it, they They helped map makers find a way to make a living off this game. There used to be this weird balance where us content creators played people's maps and, you know, we would be the ones that get paid for what we do, playing someone else's map in a video, and they don't get a penny for it. And that's going to change a bit. But, you know, in general, I think what Microsoft have done with the game up until maybe this moderation thing has been alright. And But yeah, you know, those people stick around. You still see them. You still see people that hold on to it, like... Microsoft ruined this game. You'll see that comment every now and then, and it's like, well, okay, that's that's kind of like your opinion. So you know that that opinion will always stick around, right? There's always going to be those people that like remember this, and then there will be people that forget it as well. There'll be people that just keep playing and like, and then it's just in the back of their mind and they forget about it. Are Minecraft maps still a popular thing? Says EB Hero on the marketplace. Yeah. They, on the marketplace, they've sort of packaged them as like expansions and experiences. So that way, um, there's like a lot of activity over there where those sorts of maps get played. But they are they are not like they once were. I can't believe the amount of moss that I need. Where am I going to get it all from? It must be a bit of a mistake with that. I'm going to have to look into these numbers. Like extraordinary amounts of moss I need for this build. Um, I won't delete that one then. I need moss carpets. 
cobbled deep slate walls. Jeez, let's pick something out a little easier to grab. Oh, I need a ton of oak leaves. Yeah, we might have to do some like tree growing. Yeah, we need to go like... Alright, so what other leaves do I got to get? Let's do some leaf farming. Uh, flowering acacia leaves. I'll get a whole... Actually, I need those for the other thing. So that'll be our next focus. Just farm leaves. See, if I had a bit more time earlier, what I should have done... Dang it, man. <laughs> I really want to get to a place where I can talk about these things and not be distracted by the game so much, right? What I should have done earlier today was to get all of those things in line, like a list. Get this thing, get that. Instead, I'm referring to this crazy list of stuff. That's... This stuff's... An, oh, that might mean I've done the filter wrong around the back. Huh. I'll have to double check that. Where is my acacia stuff? Like... Oh, it's in here. Oh, dang, look, I've already got loads of this. I just need to package this all up into a pretty little box. Well then, we'll just go get some oak leaves. Let's go get some oak leaves. I'm going to leave those in there with the sand. We use the dye and stuff to make different things later. So I need some bone meal. Probably a little bit of dirt. Some shears. Right, let's get back to it. Microsoft does not ruin games. What they do is apply their agenda to anything around it. And that needs all the alarm bells, all the alarms bla blaring. We're the red flags, says Veritai. Uh, I'm not sure I take quite the same detrimental view of Microsoft. To be fair, like I, I don't know quite how to summarize my apathy for it. But I'm, you know, I'm not young. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm young. I've, I've got some years under my belt, and when I was young, I saw the world very more black and white, ideology driven, kind of like evil Microsoft Corporation trying to make profits of everything. Um, and then you kind of live through a whole bunch of like things that are going to ruin everything, right? You know, this this new thing Microsoft has done is going to ruin everything, and. And then, you know, the world's going to end. Went through a bunch of those, you know, 2012, who remembers that? And then you get a bit tired of it and you start to think, this isn't actually the way the world works, right? Like, yeah, Microsoft have an agenda, but that, that gen I don't think that agenda is, like, ruining everything, right? It's about probably mostly driven by corporate goals of profit and whatnot, and that manifests in several different ways. And sometimes it can manifest in ways that produce good games, good content, and sometimes it produ it manifests in unfavorable ways, like trying to get uh, an entire player player base to migrate to your system and then enforce moderation. That's not been too great, right? But uh, you know, there's, there's things that Microsoft have done that are good for this game, so it's not all black and white. And uh, like I said, I just live through a bunch of those, right? Just and sometimes you're like you just see it in another community, and you're like, I don't care. You know, like I, I, I bet everyone here has seen like a different community getting mad about some feature, and it just doesn't really mean anything to you. It's a bit of a dismissive point of view, but it's just kind of how I feel. Is like I'm not really like I'm not really seeing something to get that angry about, especially with this moderation thing. It's like. The way it's been handled and stuff is not right and whatnot, but let's say they handled it right. There probably would have still been a at a reaction like this to some extent, but I'd have been totally cool, you know, if they had come out and talked to the community and got feedback and stuff, even though they're probably gonna go for it anyway. If they had rolled it out a little better, I would have been, you know, fair enough, you know, it's their game. This is what they're gonna do. I think the moderation system can protect people too. Which is the other side of the argument, you know, do you hold it in balance when you talk about these reasons to criticize it? Like, what about the good it can do? I really do think it can do some good, and that's because I've seen some of the horrors that take place. You know? And another another question that keeps popping into my head, I don't really know how to, like, say this in a way that feels particularly intelligent, but, like, why, why do we get angry about moderation when Microsoft does it, yet 
Like, there are loads of servers out there, individual little servers with moderation. Like, it's, it's already a thing. Yet we get mad when Microsoft decides to do it at scale. Um, and I've, everyone's probably been in a small community with bad moderators. It can easily happen. So, you know, this is like, not just mad, like, are we mad at moderation? Because that's, that was already there. It's like, I don't have an answer for that. It's just something that rumbles around in my head. I think it's because the player base already handled it. So it's sort of unnecessary. That's, that's what I'm getting at though. So like, have the, have the player base handled it because like, are those systems going to be as good? I don't know. Like, I always think about how you have a perception and a feeling towards a thing, but then imagine that you could get the raw statistical data. Imagine you could extract all the points, right? And I, and I wonder, like, if you could extract from every single server, you could measure and quantify the experience and quality of small communities doing moderation. And, you know, this is hypothetical. This is what I'm suggesting is probably incredibly difficult to do. How would it compare to what Microsoft is doing? Like, what's your gut intuition on that? Because to me, I feel like what Microsoft will have is probably a broader level of consistency. And then you would definitely probably see some more inconsistency on small community sites. But might it be surprising to learn that actually leaving small communities to do this for themselves. What if that didn't yield the better results? What if uh, that was not an effective way to do it? These are these are questions we can't really get the answers for. But everyone's got like that gut instinct that you either fall over here or over there. And we tend to then grab information to kind of like support our theory or whatever or our feeling and back it up. And I always want to like, I always want data to come along. I always want there to be like some numbers to uh, kind of back whatever that is up because the numbers you know you can say they don't lie but numbers can num numbers can tell lies they can be distorted but uh, it certainly gives you a better basis I think to make an informed decision now nah, the player base can moderate their own server but someone can hop and cause issues somewhere else rather than move the issue elsewhere it removes it I'm not sure I follow what you're saying, but like, global moderation stops problematic, potentially stops problematic players from, you know, jumping from community to community because they get caught out and then they can't go anywhere. You know, there's ups and downs, left, right and centre, right? I wouldn't say it's been handled, I'd say it's been enforced without a visible reaction to the community. Yeah, it, it definitely was just, you know, enforced, I guess. Shinny says, imagine you're at school and you played a ball game with your friends and you had certain rules and then the school said it was mandatory to play the ball game following a similar set of rules. It's probably a f similar feeling than when Mojang sets an official moderation system. Yeah, absolutely. It does, f does probably feel like that. And again, like I feel like if you speak to that, that's totally fine. It's like, hey, I actually like that we have our own little communities and we handle it our own way. I got, I got to admit, like, um, it does sound really appealing. I just, I just don't think the global moderation thing, it, it can be done wrong, and we have to wait and see if it's done wrong or done right. You know, I don't have the answer there, but I think if they put, you know, together a competent team with the right set of objectives and people involved, I think it can do good. I really do. We have to wait and see. Statistics are the most untrustworthy type of numbers. You can really make stats mean anything, says Arkham Cookie. I don't think it's I don't think it's right to say they're untrustworthy. I think I think the thing with statistics is you need to really understand all the aspects of what statistics are like you know because I can show you a graph of like you know look at this crazy 90% and that 10% right 90% of players love the new moderation system 10% don't that can be completely true about the people that I asked and I could have gone and deliberately asked a crowd of people I know that enjoyed it you know right so like but then the, the point is is that if you have more and more context around the statistics so 
what was the actual question that was asked? Sometimes you can ask a question in a kind of bias framed way. Who was asked? What is the demographic? The more and more context you get for the statistics, the more you can understand what they are interpreting, right? And so sometimes statistics can be put together with malicious intent, well not malicious intent, but you know, to serve an agenda or point of view. And it can be very hard to try and do things neutrally and not notice perhaps you worded that question in a way that would get more yeses than noes. And this is this is all stuff like that you should know about and be educated about so that when you encounter statistics, you can think about all of these things, as opposed to just saying that they are inherently untrustworthy, because Clearly, if you look at the modern world, the advance that we've had over the last couple hundred years, um, statistics would have been a part, a big part of learning and understanding our world and making progress on many different fronts. So they have their use, and they, you know, they need to, they need to be handled right. It's easy as F to manipulate statistics, says Castle. Yeah, of course it is, because I can just go, here's some stats, and I could have just made them up in my head. We do have to operate with some level of trust with one another, right? So if you're reading a research paper that's got a bunch of statistics in it, you know, you need to put a little bit of faith in the researcher that they did their due diligence. Hopefully they've provided lots of context about all the different questions that they asked and whatnot, and if they didn't, maybe it throws up some red flags. You haven't really clarified how you got this data. You know, that's a, a bit of a red flag, right? You just you just said this is the data. So it's all about the context, context and uh, whatnot. I just seen such a statistic by 6,000 people, which of whom said said 70% 70, 70 said they would stop playing Minecraft because of the update. But the statistic was created by a channel that is catering the anti-19.1 movement. So yeah, there is that. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I was almost going to make a similar suggestion that if you polled my audience, you might find uh, that that uh, you know it's more or less favourable. And if you polled someone who's making videos about it and, and is against it, you're probably going to find exactly that, right? Right. I need two stacks of this and glazed is the next one I've pulled off of the list of things that we need. Well, it's not just blatantly making up numbers, it is also in the way it is presented. You can manipulate the audience just through the presentation of the results. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And again, this is why I think it's useful to explain the different aspects of statistics and all the things that I've been saying, so that when you see those charts, you can understand that for yourself. Especially when it's something you believe in, or like, that backs up your own world beliefs or view of the world like that is one of the easiest things to take for granted is when the bit of information you're looking at kind of confirms your world belief that's when it's really easy for you to be like oh yeah yeah that's that's totally true right and there are loads of little sneaky tactics that they use like sometimes right let's say you're looking at a chart and you've got like you've got like three bars going up right one's small one's in the middle one's really high and they're giving you this information. Maybe it's like a political thing. These three political candidates. If you look over at the left-hand side of the graph where the numbers start and end, what you might see is the bottom is like 10,000 and the top is 12,000. Right? You're looking at the difference of 2,000 votes. Everyone got a minimum of 10,000. If you, if you had 0 to 12,000, then all of a sudden they look much closer together. And this is, uh, this is something that actually news stations like... Um, Fox, MSNBC, probably ones here in the UK. I definitely know the Americans have been uh, caught out for it, the American news channels. But, like, they they show these graphs, but, like, you know, the what they imply is sort of skewed. Now, you could say they're lying, but they're sort of not because all the information's on the chart. But the thing is, it, like, it will trick your initial reaction to it unless you know to look for those things. From what I've seen, any time there's a major change in something, people don't usually like it, but over time they get used to it and become the normal thing until the next change. Happened many times with Disney parks when they change something. Artemis, you're absolutely right, and that's that's kind of like the attitude that I was talking about earlier for myself. It's just like, I've seen these like a outrage cycles happen a whole bunch of times, and life just goes on most of the time, and and I just, you know... 
I, I should really like rack my brain and try and remember. Is there is there one of those things that I've ever been caught up with and I'm still upset about to this day when it comes to like big changes? I think probably on a societal level there would probably be some things, maybe government policies or whatever that changed that I wouldn't be happy with. But generally, like not much is popping to the top of my head, and I kind of know like for me in the world of entertainment. It, like it doesn't make it, to me it doesn't make sense to be upset about these things in the world of entertainment another problem with statistics is how they are perceived and propagated in public you might have heard the 41 percent of trans people commit suicide however those 41 percent come from a poll with one question have you at least tried to commit self-harm and or suicide and consider that trans people might feel betrayed by their body society or life in general less than half suddenly doesn't sound that high yeah you need you need the broader context because like the broader context doesn't dismiss the original number or anything but it, like, it just informs you so much more about what it is you're trying to internalize and understand i also heard an interesting statistic about the uh, lgbtq community which was a polling of americans for like how they thought the population was like the the amount of people in a population the demographic and like the amount of people in in that community is like less than one percent of the u.s population but when they polled people and again even even this information like they could have polled a particular group of people i don't know i didn't dig that deep in it just kind of occurs to me i didn't think about that stuff let's hope they did their due diligence and did this properly but it was something like they thought like one in three people were a part of that community and like that's such a big difference between reality and perception but again now, now it kind of occurs to me like even here we are using statistics again talking about how they can be flawed and stuff like it just it goes around in circles but you have to have trust somewhere in there right otherwise otherwise you'll be playing this game of undermining everything all day long you'll be doing it all day long Right, there's some of that. Uh, I'm probably gonna need more mud bricks for that. Dripstone blocks next on the list. Need about two stacks. What we got lying around? Oh god, I'm gonna need to build some farms soon. I think dripstone's over here. It is. Ooh, I got no dripstone. Oh, oh no, it's granite. Yikes. Right, I might just go like look for some dripstone caves and rip some stuff out. Uh. I kind of don't know where... There's there's not really any, like, super nearby here, is there? So... I don't, off the top of my head, know where to go. Maybe my uh, starter base would have some of that stuff. I'm going to look for some more obvious things on this list. A whole bunch of stone. I need over ten stacks of that. Let's just go fish out ten stacks from over there again. This is gonna go, this little system here, by the way. I'm not I'm not living with this anymore. It's miserable. <laughs> Using all my ender pearls to get back and forth. X, a lot of people say that Microsoft ruined the game, but do you do but do you think they actually Inverted the game with the gameplay. I'm not sure what you meant by the last bit, but people saying they ruined the game, like using statements of absolution, tends to, I think, represent emotions more than it does, like, you know, defined ruined because a massively increased player base, continuous updates, stability and performance of the game is better than ever. That being said, we do lean on mods a lot for that. Um, you know, like, like I feel like if you have that feeling of like, oh, Microsoft ruined this game, get to the core of what it is. Maybe you just don't like the fact that there's a corporation and they do stuff like um, monetize the bedrock market space and introduce these moderation systems. Like, like say that, say all of that, because that's all fair. But I think summarizing something that was just being ruined is just a bit. I don't know. Uh, right, the list. I keep closing it and then having to open it again. Right, so we've got the stone. I need a stupid amount of spruce leaves. Then I got the grass blocks. I did that. Then I need a whole bunch of crimson planks. Crimson. Over here. See, I haven't built those wood farms for it yet. 
So I've got to farm a bunch of this stuff again. Yeah, this project might be on hold for a little bit longer now that I think about it. Because I just need so much stuff. There's so many blocks. So many blocks that go into this. I've got a crazy long list. Oh, I've got the flowering azalea leaves. I've got the sand. Amethyst cluster. That is something we can do. That's not the amethyst block. There's clusters in there. Seven. And I need... 132. So how do we get our hands on two stacks of clusters? Well, you know, I saw Cubfan do this thing um, season 8, so it was last season, right? To take a geode and waterlog it. And then I think that means you can instant mine and not I don't know, not have like uh, not have the budding blocks break, if I'm not mistaken. This looks like a good shout. This is like a nice big one. But I feel like you'd need a, a conduit facade as well, right? Maybe we could just go over here, get some, start prepping it. That could be a little project. Um, but maybe closer to where we are, so it can grow more. Like, this one's pretty big. Kind of looks like there's not a lot of budding blocks. I might also need the basalt and calcite. Alright, so where is the nearest geode? Couple down there. That one looks real good. Probably because I've opened it up a little bit. I like the idea of putting a sphere shape together for it. Like a schematic of a sphere. This is a cool little project now, I think. There's another question of like how to get there. So from this cave, this one really is like just way closer and it's pretty big. I think we'll go for that then. Right, so we'll head to this beacon beam, dig a tunnel over. Oh, that reminds me, I need to dig a tunnel to the slime farm. Like, I need to think about how I'm going to navigate the base now that I'm not doing the ribcage thing. Because I need a tunnel that goes somewhere out here and, like, connects to this big cave system. This so I'm eventually going to light up a lot of this, and this is going to be where everything goes. So, down at this level, we'll go across that geode. Cool. Right, uh, on that note, I'm going to need some buckets for water logging. Uh-huh. I think we'll make a schematic... I just realized what the time was. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I thought we had like half hour or something of streaming left. No. I have just totally lost track of time. That has not happened in a long time. Okay, we won't do that today. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll do that next time. Dang it. I got, I got something to go do like literally right now. I have to just end the stream. I'm so sorry, peeps. I totally lost. That's amazing. I had no idea. We were going for that long. Well then, big thanks to everyone who subscribed, resubscribed, donated, and cheered. Thanks to all the Patreons, the mods, the people gifting subs. Appreciate it. I'm glad all of you didn't want to point it out. You wanted to keep watching. That's amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I will raid a channel, but I'm just going to wrap up right now. So thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.